It's a nice kind of snowy day today as we worship the Lord on this first Sunday in our new year of 2022. It's a special day as well as we are kind of looking back on our history just a little bit. Some people don't like history. And we're also looking forward to the body of Christ community ministering in the future. So let us stand as we are able and worship the Lord together. let us pray. Lord, you make all things new. You bring hope alive in our hearts and cause our spirits to be born again. Thank you for this new year, for all the potential it holds. Come and kindle in us a mighty flame so that in our time many will see the wonders of God and live forever to praise your glorious name. We ask these and all things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Everybody online. I know we have a lot online today. Can't blame you. Stay in your warm home. We're glad to have so many here today, though. That's fantastic. At the beginning of this new year, I want to share with you a scripture from Paul's letter to Philippians that resonates with me this morning. It's very simple. It goes like this. Being confident of this, that he, he who began a good work in you will carry it to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. That was Paul's support for the people of Philippi that uh, were faithful to the gospel and that the Lord had begun a good work in them, but continued to bring it to fruition. It was 26 years ago this week that we began weekly worship as the Body of Christ community. At that time, we were at Breckenridge. 26 years, hard to believe. No question that the Lord began a good work in this faith community and has continued to work in and through it and in and through us, not only to be there for one another, 
but also to extend his compassion and love to so many outside these walls. While we still had to deal with COVID throughout this past year, we remain close as a family of faith and we were blessed once again during 2021. Again, this year being able to live stream our worship services made a huge difference. And because of your support and the dedication of both Ryans back in the booth, who've done a great job at handling the occasional gremlins of the internet, uh, we've been able to reach out not only to people in our church community, but so many more beyond us, beyond Northern Ohio, beyond Ohio, across the country. It's amazing how many people you're able to connect with in that way. On an average Sunday this past year with COVID, we had, give or take, 100 people here on most Sundays. Some Sundays more, some Sundays a little less. But typically, by Tuesday of, the, of that week, we'd have at least 150 online. It's pretty amazing. We had 150% more online than we had in person. So together, that was a lot of people. Yeah, because those people who are viewing, obviously, online, it's not necessarily just one person, it's other people, too. So we were really blessed to be able to reach so many. By the way, on Christmas Eve, just a week ago, between the two services, we had about 130, 135, online, 400. So we are really blessed. Uh, the Lord has given us truly an unexpected but a great way to reach so many people with the gospel message. And that's the age that we live in, isn't it? I mean, the pandemic kind of sped up what we were already thinking about doing, and that is not just to reach us here, but to reach beyond these walls to so many people in our society today that go on the internet and connect through that. And certainly being here in person is very special, but if we're able to reach people in that way also, it's a double blessing. Like you, I'm hoping and praying that during 2022 that we'll finally see the gradual declining control of COVID in our world. I know right, right now it's a little tough, but we're hopeful by later January this peak will subside and hopefully we'll start to see um, more control of it this year. As that happens, I'm sure that more people feel comfortable in returning to in-person worship. And I can assure you that we will continue to provide a safe environment here at the body of Christ for you to worship in. Looking forward, I can tell you that because of your generous support in our special appeal this past fall, we have been able to begin to significantly improve the sound and video when we go outside in the spring for worship. One thing we learned over these past two years is that we really like worshiping outdoors. We love the outdoors. We are blessed with a great pavilion and a patio on our beautiful grounds. And when the sun is shining on a pleasantly warm Sunday morning, there's no better place to be as we come together to praise and give thanks to our God. And seeing that snow on January 2nd, I can hardly wait for May. <laughs> it's going to be great. I want to share with you this morning that another big development, we've, we've updated and revamped our website. And we're just in the process now. There's a few kinks in it. It's going to be called the Body of Christ Community.com. It was Body of Christ Community.org. It's now going to be Body of Christ .com. Both Pastor Eric and I felt that it was time to make some major changes so that you and many others would find it much easier to navigate for the information you might be looking for. The homepage is much more dynamic and attractive, especially for those inquiring about our church community. I want to thank my grandson, Ryan Thompson, who worked last couple months to make it happen. And uh, we're, we're getting there. <laughs> we, uh, there's a couple of things that we got to still work out, but hopefully this week you'll see it working fine. I encourage you to direct family and friends to this website and also to live stream services in order to get a better sense of who we are as a church community. Before we use the internet that much, before we live stream, really, the, one of the few ways that we could get people to see who we were is to, to invite them here, which we still want to do. But for a lot of people in our culture today, they're a little bit reluctant, if they haven't been to church, to walk into a church. But they're much more easily inclined to turn their computer on 
and go on our webpage or live stream. So I would encourage people in your life that maybe you're trying to encourage to come close to the Lord to, to utilize uh, these things that we have now. God knows how many people in our neighborhoods, in our communities, need the spiritual strength and healing that Jesus offers. Now, we're going to put a new feature on our uh, homepage. We're calling it the Year of Kindness. On this, if you go on every day, you will find a daily scripture with a suggested act of kindness for that day. So we have a really neat resource we're using. So if you go on in the morning, Ryan will put it on the night before, and you'll be able to see the scripture and what act of kindness you could do that day. Our society, as you know, has become very harsh and divided. And one of the best things that you and I as followers of Jesus can do to heal our land is to bring more kindness into everyday life. I think you'll find these kindness suggestions both uplifting and motivating. Before I turn uh, this over to Pastor Eric, and then uh, Beth's going to share a few words too, let me again thank you for your immense generosity in the financial of our church throughout 2021. We will have a complete financial report available to you in a couple of weeks. Thanks to Sue, who does a great job. We're getting the numbers together. But I can tell you this morning, we have no debt, we have money in reserve, and our available operational funds are healthy. And for that, we thank you. It says a lot that throughout the pandemic, your contributions have increased each year. They're better in 2020 than they were in 2019. And again, this year, 2021 compared to 2020, it was up. So we thank you for that. And it's allowed us to do a lot of things uh, around the church and continue to do things as well as some outreach work that we've done and sharing with other people. We shared some money with uh, Dennis Anthony with the recovery homes here. We, we were able to give the Ivy Home $725 from our Christmas collection, the great pro-life ministry in, uh, that helps women over on Tyler Boulevard. This year's Christmas collection was the largest in our church's history, over $16,500. So we really thank you for that. Um, I, I truly, I think Eric and I are so blessed as pastors to know that kind of support that you give for this church because not every church is in that situation. You've been extremely generous and we really appreciate that. And more than we appreciate it, the Lord blesses you. I would ask you like you did this last year, and I know these next couple months, there might be a lot of people who need to stay home for a lot of reasons. And you were so great over the last couple of years. If you send your donation through the mail, that's fine too. Or you can go on the website, there's a donor box there if you're not able to get here. So we appreciate all the ways that you support this. We've tried to be very wise in the maintenance of our physical structures on the property, as well as care and improvement of our, outdoor, uh, our outdoors here. I wanna thank a committed group of people that work with Pastor Eric, men and women, who give their time and talent to keep things going and looking good both outside and in. So now I'd like Pastor Eric to come up and share a few thoughts. The reading that I'd like to kind of work with this morning is from Paul's letter, second letter to Timothy, chapter 1, verse 7. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity or cowardice or fear, but he has given us a spirit of power and of love and of sound judgment and personal discipline, abilities that result in a calm, well-balanced mind and self-control. The word of the Lord. There's a story, a brief story, about a man named Jack. Having been bored witless by the world's most boring preacher, Jack came out of church before the preacher had finished the sermon. 
Outside, he met a friend who asked, has he finished yet? And Jack replied, oh yes, he's finished, but he won't stop. When it comes to serving the body, the Lord, as the body of Christ, we will not stop nor take a break from our mission. The mission to go out into the world and preach the good news of creation. In the new year, 2022, as a Christian community, we continue to face major challenges. Secularism, cultural Marxism, mendacity on a large scale, and the scourge of COVID-19. As a community of believers under the Lordship of Jesus Christ, we will not be halted or deterred in our efforts. Now, some of our challenges are on the macro level or the big picture, as just mentioned. Others are on the individual and personal level. However, like Timothy, we can overcome the obstacles upon us, ahead of us, by intentionally activating the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the gifts that he has bestowed upon us. These supernatural gifts of courage and power and love, sound judgment and self-control are the essence of fulfilling the kingdom of God. In Paul's letter, second letter to Timothy, chapter 1, verse 7, Paul seeks to encourage and inspire his young protege for his ministry in Ephesus. Timothy was young, and he had a challenging task in battling against heresies that were bound to threaten the early church. Now, on the supernatural level, Timothy had every spiritual endowment he needed to be a good servant of our Lord and an effective leader in the Christian community. He was further blessed with an excellent model and mentor in St. Paul. On the human level, however, he was naturally timid, fearful, and cowardly when faced with a task that was ahead of him. Each of us faces a similar challenge in our own service of the Lord. We have the strength of the Holy Spirit to serve heroically, but the natural man or woman often creates an obstacle that needs to be surmounted. It's important to talk about the impact of fear and cowardice and timidity in our service with Christ. It can lead to backsliding in the faith or an attitude of conformity to the world. The American psychologist Rollo May wrote, the opposite of courage in our society is not cowardice, it's conformity. When we are timid, fearful, or cowardly, we tend to step back from the action or go with the flow. This causes us to get stuck on the sidelines of the church's mission or judged incorrect incorrectly as accepting something heretical, when in reality we are simply, we do not possess the fortitude to stand against it. In order to keep his courage high and his effort strenuous, Paul reminds Timothy, and he reminds us today, that timidity, fear, or cowardice is never from God. Like Timothy, we must affirm and intentionally activate the Spirit's resources in our life in order to be effective workers for the kingdom of God. Paul tells Timothy that to overcome a natural reticence to speak and act, to overcome it with confidence. Timothy needs to allow his spiritual gift to resume its dominance and restore a higher level of effectiveness. In other words, Timothy needs to claim and focus the spiritual gifts he has been given rather than allowing feelings of fear and timidity to overwhelm him. St. Paul tells Timothy the characteristics that are needed to encourage the servant of God. First of all, courage. The practice of Christian service should bring courage to a man 
or a woman. It always takes courage, as we know, to be a Christian, and that courage comes from the continual consciousness of the presence of Christ in our lives. Do not underestimate the courage you will gain when you realize that you, all of you, all of us, are a child of, of God, equipped with certain gifts and talents, and called to use those gifts and talents in the setting that God has chosen for us. So courage and power. The Holy Spirit gives us the power to overcome the weakness of the natural man and woman. In the true Christian, there is always power to cope, the power to shoulder a back-breaking task, the power to stand straight in face of a shattering situation, the power to retain faith in the face of a soul-searing sorrow and the wounding disappointments. The Christian is characteristically the man or woman who could pass the breaking point and not break. Third characteristic, love. In Timothy's case, this was love for his brothers and sisters, for his congregation, for the people that Christ put with him. He loved his people so much that he never found any toil too great to undertake for them or any situation threatening enough to daunt him. No man should ever enter the service of the church unless there is the love of Christ's people with his heart. And this principle applies not only to Timothy, but also to every member of our community. And finally, sound judgment and self-discipline. Now this word comes from one of those untranslatable Greek words, sophronismos. Someone has defined this word as the sanity of saintliness. Falconer, a uh, theologian, biblical commentator, defines it as, quote, control of oneself in face of panic or passion. It is Christ alone who can give us that self-mastery which will keep us from being swept away or from running away. These gifts of the Holy Spirit for the Christian leader and believer, courage, power, love, sound judgment, and self-discipline are needed to serve Christ effectively. This understanding of the gifts of the Holy Spirit provides the substructure or the foundation for our continuing vision at the Body of Christ community. Despite the challenges from the world and from our own natural limitations, we are enjoined by the force of the Holy Spirit to be courageous in sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ while relying on God's power and not our own. We are exhorted to have Christ-like love for every member of our community while cultivating sound judgment and self-discipline. Now from the feedback we have received over the last year, for 2022, we would like to continue our goal to improve Sunday worship services in a variety of ways. We will continue to facilitate regular Bible studies, men's gatherings, lady, ladies' nights out, as well as unique events that are always Christ-centered. And we will continue to have opportunities available for service in such areas, and Pastor Mike just mentioned it, in the areas of landscaping our beautiful campus here at the Body of Christ community, to be involved in church art and environment, the music ministry, the safety team, the tech crew, perhaps serving as greeters, and other areas that are yet to be developed. The last couple of years have been difficult for all of us. In these challenging times, we cannot stop nor take a break from the mission of the church and from the mission of our church. God needs men and women to rise up 
and intentionally live the, in this community to live community with courage, power, love, sound judgment, and discipline. And this mission continues with us today. Good morning. Happy New Year. Good morning. Um, I have shared this update about the McKinley Community Outreach um, for the years of 2020 and now 2021, um, my tenure as director at the um, Outreach Center, which I am so honored to serve the Lord in. Well, I just want to tell you about all the blessings. McKinley... Community Outreach Center has not only survived the last two years impacted by the pandemic, but the faith-based ministry has thrived. We own our own building. We are financially blessed. We currently have over 35 active volunteer servants, which faithfully volunteer their time each week. We have a committed executive board of directors, which Pastor Mike is the president of the board. And we have a very hardworking and successful leadership team. And the building itself shines with all the new improvements and all the new painting and cleaning and organization. It is absolutely beautiful. And our partnerships with the community are ever-growing, from large corporations to small local businesses to many, many, many area churches from all over Lake County. We have faithful people, like most of you here at the Body of Christ, over the many years, over eight years, have not only supported financially McKinley, but also you have all been there within the walls volunteering. We have many local org organizations such as the Lions Club and the American Legion, and I actually could go on and on and on, but I don't have time to list all of them right now. And also the city of Willoughby, the police departments, the fire departments, the recreation departments um, are all so devoted to McKinley between financially um, supporting the center and also collecting and doing very, very large um, donation collections as non-perishables and taxable items. And then also we are partners, as you know, with United Way and the Cleveland Food Bank. I'm sure you've seen um, the different articles that have been in the News Herald this year. But I wanted to share with you um, what actually happens now. Um, we had to make a few changes uh, due to the pandemic. So now our guests um, are able to come. We have hours three days a week on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Um, and every 30 days, our guests are able to come to our Choice Food Pantry, which offers meats, many, many meats, fresh produce, and bakery. Um, then they're able to, we have all the rooms open, so they're able to um, go to the taxable room um, for their basic hygiene needs and household cleaning products. And then we have all the different clothing rooms, the men's room, the women's room, and the children's rooms. And then we have the household and linens room. We have a pet food um, and pet supply room, and our book room, and our chapel is open for quiet prayer. I wanted to share a few of our statistics for 2021. 1,760 households were served at McKinley this year. About half of these people, almost a little bit less than half of these people were seniors. Um, the, um, that's 60 and above. And many of them actually have their grandchildren in their households right now. Um, and of that figure, 784 were actual children that we served. 
um, and our food pantry provided food for approximately almost 36,000 meals, which averages about nine meals per person. And I just wanted to take the time to um, invite everyone here that hasn't been to McKinley for a while to come. We're there uh, Monday through Thursday. Come for a tour. Come see how beautiful the building looks. See if the way that we're serving our community right now is maybe a way that you can volunteer um, either a couple hours a week or a couple hours a month. It, the the um, serving is very flexible. And also at this time, I just wanted to thank everyone um, who has um, been so generous and faithful over the years and this year in financially um, uh, donating to the center and our mission there, serving those in need in our community. God bless all. Look what you've done How could you fall so far You should be ashamed of yourself So I was ashamed of myself The lies I believed They got some roots that run deep I let them take a hold of my life I let them take control of my life Standing in your presence, Lord, I can feel you digging all my roots up. Feel you healing all my wounds up. All I can say is hallelujah. Look what you've done. Look what you've done in me. You spoke the truth into the lies I let my heart believe. Look what you've done. Suddenly all the shame is gone. I thought I was too broken, now I see. You were breaking ground inside of me. Standing in your presence, Lord, I can feel you digging all my roots up. I feel you healing all my wounds up. All I can say is hallelujah. Look what you've done, look what you've done in me. You spoke the truth into the lies I let my heart believe. Look at me now, look how you've made me new. The enemy did everything that he could do. Look what you've done. Did high. 
high I'm singing look what you've done Please stand as you are able. Let us pray our table prayer together. Lord, you have formed us and you know us. You know our coming in and our going out. You know when we sit and when we stand. You know our hearts and our thoughts are always before you. You know all our sins and failures. Nothing is hidden from you. Yet you do not abandon us. Instead, you, you patiently teach us, lead us, and, and bring, bring us back to you. Indeed, from the beginning, from before we were conceived, you knew each of us and kept us in your hearts. You loved each of us and declared that we were yours. Praise be to you, great God of all the living. Our hearts rejoice and our spirits are glad because of your great goodness to us. We, we welcome, welcome you and give you thanks. thanks. You who are before us and behind us, above us and within us. You are truth and wisdom and compassion. We especially rejoice at the wonder of Jesus, your beloved one, born poor and weak like us, knowing hunger and cold like us, feeling weary and hurt like us, fully human like us in all things but sin. We remember how, on the night before he died, Jesus called his friends for a final meal. Remember how he took bread, blessed it, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body broken for you. Remember how he took wine, blessed it, gave it to his disciples saying, this is my blood shed for you and for all people. Do this in memory of me. One last time he spoke his heart poured out his truth, gave all of himself to us and for us. In the mystery of his life and death, and his rising to new life, with you, great God, as Lord of all. Jesus is your pledge, your gift, your life, given to each of us through the mystery of the breaking of the bread. Send your church, Lord, upon our church and upon all peoples, upon our families and our friends, Teach all of us to value the good and teach us to do what is right. Send your spirit, Lord, upon all who are suffering in all in special need, upon our loved ones and all who have died. Bring us all together in your one community of faith and love. out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world 
the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And gathering all our prayers into one, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, and ever. Amen. All who desire to worship the Lord are welcome at our table.
please stand as you are able. In this Christmas season full of joy and hope, let us present our needs to our Father in heaven, and please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. That all church leaders may courageously proclaim the truth of the gospel by word and deed, we pray to the Lord. Lord that world leaders may be people of peace, leading their people with reverence for God and obedience to his commandments, we pray to the Lord. For the safety of our American troops stationed around the world and for first responders, police, fire, paramedics, and dispatchers, we pray to the Lord. For those who work to defend the lives of the unborn, the sick, the infirm, and the aged, those who defend humanity's inalienable right to life, we pray to the Lord that despite our human weakness, we may fully utilize our spiritual gifts, courage, power, love, sound judgment, and self-discipline, we pray to the Lord. We pray for Mike Bonner, Bob Jankowski, Nino Luzio, John Ramsky, Betty and Bob Stagura, Mike Weber, Mary Ellen Strong, Ken and Dennis Losey, Janet Borak, Karen Carter, Suzanne Jackson, Miriam Schneider, and for those intentions we offer in the silence of our heart. We pray to the Lord. For family and friends of our loved ones memorialized on our Body of Christ Memorial Christmas tree, that we would all grow closer to God as we remember our loved ones, we pray to the Lord. Lord, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters in this new year, that those who believe in Jesus Christ, your only begotten Son, may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Amen. There's a one actual announcement, a praise and worship gathering will be on Tuesday at 2.30 p.m. in the church. And um, if we could uh, look forward and let us pray our final blessing together. May the spirit of the Lord be always upon us. May the blessings of the Lord always surround us, and may our hearts know his abiding peace, and may our God, who is our light and life, bless us always. Let's go in peace, everybody. Have a good, good week and a good New Year.